honored to be here with Dat Wynn, uh, All-American at uh, Texas A&M, and you can almost hear those whoops coming through the internet as, uh, as those Aggies are watching us today. And so it's great to have you here. Also, seven, eight years with the uh, Dallas Cowboys, and uh, it's just an honor to be with you today. Excited about having you at the luncheon here in just a few minutes. But this is an audience that couldn't make it to the luncheon, so we just want to fill them in a little bit about your life story. So you have a phenomenal story. I haven't even heard all of your <laughs> life story, and I know there's a lot to it that we couldn't get to. But hit the highlights for us in terms of kind of your your life story. Well, my life story started years ago. I think my uh, back in 75 when my dad was fairly fortunate enough to afford a radio. And wow. that was during the Vietnam War. And he, he had a radio just to listen to what was going on in the war. And knowing that the Viet Cong was coming to invade um, Saigon, which we live in a south south village okay. of Saigon called Binh Da. And my dad was in the shrimping industry and, um, and uh, we had that radio. So we was unknowing what was going on during that time. And uh, when, he, when he made the decision that the VC was gonna come invade our village, Dad had a plan to get our family out. So wow. my, my mom was pregnant with myself. Oh, she was wow. five months pregnant. I okay. was six months pregnant with myself. And I had five other siblings, oh, you know, from uh, 13 older. and under. Yeah, okay. all older, but there were 13 was the oldest. And then all the way down to my brother who was okay. one. Okay. So we all left at one time and we had mo a boat set and, um, and really uh, about three or four other families that were supposed to go with us and which- wow. um, uh, but we came over to America, had a chance to, you know, live another life, have yeah. an opportunity. And and the reason why we left was that the Viet Cong obviously is a communist country back then. And, you know, it's going to be Buddhist or you're going to be a Christian right. and in Vietnam. Right. And obviously they eliminate the Christians. And wow. that's why they didn't want some of dad said, hey, I want my kids to grow up in America to have a chance, enough, a chance to know Jesus and have a chance of Christ somehow in their wow. life. And. And that's why we left and we came here. And, um, you know, for me, it's always been, well, there's more stories too. I can sit here all day telling the yeah, story. Yeah. But uh, we came to America, born at a refugee camp there in Fort Chaffee, Arkansas. Wow. And there, um, you know, we went around a couple other places and we ended up in Rockport. And wow. uh, because of the shrimping industry, yeah. because all our family was in the industry there uh, in Vietnam. And um, ironic how God put us in places, right? So I told you a little town in Vietnam was called Binh Da. Uh -huh. Translation is Port of Rock. Oh, are you serious? So wow. we've been there 40, down Rockport, uh, 45 years now. Wow. So, um, but then I got introduced to football and the game of football is, uh, is really, really shaped who I am. Yeah. It helped a lot yeah. in a lot yeah. of different ways of, of the game of football, understanding the game of football and also the mentorship of the coaches. Right. And I think uh, I tell people all the time, I had a meeting the other day at the National Football Foundation uh, board meeting. And, and I said, hey, one to 20, the list of people that's important in my life. Yeah. Mom, dad, three to 20, yeah. coaches. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And they impact us in so, so many different ways, the way they care themselves, the way they treat their wives, they treat other yeah. people and how they taught you in life. So for me, um, sports has always been part of my life and I'm so thankful and grateful and, and it shaped who I am. And, and I'm just thankful that I had a chance because uh, there's many, many other stories. I can tell you one story before we move on. Yeah. Is that um, I was at part of a, the board of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes right. uh, down in San Antonio. And Bob Lilly right. and I host right. the, the tournament every year. Oh, that's great. And uh, Greg Myers, Coach Myers died. Uh, he was with Coach Landry. He was an right. offensive line coach for many, many years. Uh, Jim Myers, I'm sorry, Jim Myers, he died. And uh, we said, hey, we're going to honor Coach since he just passed. So his wife's going to show up. Wow. So his wife shows up to the golf tournament. And it's, you know, 6.30, 7 o'clock, about tee off at 8. So I'm coming in. I just want to go introduce myself to all the sponsors and thank yeah, the sponsors. Right. So right. that's what that's what Bob and I did. And uh, and I walked in and I was about to grab some breakfast. I'm walking around and she's... This lady's sitting there. Yeah. She goes, it's Miss Myers. And she goes, uh, I think it's Martha Myers, her name. And she goes, are you dad? And I said, yes, ma'am, I am. She goes, hey, son, sit down. I want to I want to ask you a couple questions. She called you son. Yeah. <laughs> so she sat me down and she goes, and she goes, hey, um, Jim and I were in Cambodia during the Vietnam War. Wow. Jim was in the Air Force. So he flew and I was a nurse. And, wow. And when the war was going on, they were bringing kids from the hospital that were born yeah. in shoe boxes. Wow. And wow. she said, is there any chance that was when 
was you wow. in the shoebox because she knew right. the age yeah. and she knew that yeah. time. Yeah. And I said, like, wow. I said, like, no, ma'am. I was still in my mom's womb. I, right. And it blew me away but that. But just a few months earlier, could have been, right? Could have yeah. been. And, and, and I always go back and I was like, you know, God, wow. I could chose anybody I out know. of all those kids, all yeah. those people that came over from Vietnam. Yeah. And he chose me to have a chance to play this American sport. Yeah. In a playing for the America's team. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, like, yeah. it's amazing. So I yeah. owe everything to, you know, my Lord and Savior, yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh, that's great. Uh, that's so great. Uh, what about between your college days, your your time with the Cowboys? What would be one of your favorite uh, memories or uh, what are you most proud of? <laughs> I don't know most proud. I think uh, the best thing about those times were it goes by fast. Or the yeah. worst thing, I guess, is, is it goes by so fast. Yeah. And I think one of my core values now in my business is that, hey, be where your feet are. Right. You know, enjoy that moment. Because I yeah. and during that time, you're just trying to make the team and you're trying to beat and make sure you maintain, yeah. especially in the National Football League. Right. And in college, we're the same way. Because if you knew my story at college, I, I wasn't a highly recruit. I got there and there was other players there. Yeah. I'll share that oh, story yeah. today uh, at, at the luncheon. But, you know, I was... We didn't have Twitter. We didn't have Instagram. We didn't have <laughs> any of that social yeah, media. So yeah. you didn't really know who was coming yeah. to the university. Yeah. And you signed the letter of intent and you show up. And I was like, oh, my Lord. I walked yeah. to campus. Yeah. I was thinking it was the best thing was since sliced bread, right? <laughs> yeah. Small yeah. town of Rockport. Everybody loves you. You know, you yeah. everywhere you go, hey, you're getting free meals and everybody knows who you are, right? Yeah. So I show up to A&M and there's five other, four other linebackers. Yeah. And A&M was known for the wrecking crew, famous wrecking crew defense right. and three defensive linemen, four linebackers. Yeah. There's five of us that signed. Yeah. yeah. One didn't play. One's yeah. not going to play. Yeah. And, and much less the upperclassmen, right? And upperclassmen. Yeah. And I wasn't going to play. Yeah. I had a red shirt. And boy, that that really that really um, hit the toll on my career, my life. And I really like opens my eyes that. Yeah. Um, shoot, if the, if the transporter, uh, the transfer portal yeah. was just easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I would have been, woo, I yeah. was out of yeah. Highway yeah. 6. I was yeah. out of A&M. But um, I went and, back to, And uh, when did you start playing at A&M? What, so what? I red shirt freshman year, the following okay. year. So I go back and I say, hey, I'm going to transfer. I'm I'm uh, A&M lied to me. You know, five linebackers. Yeah. I'm never going to yeah. play. The guy that's in front of me that I'm backing up or trying to back up was uh, an All-American high school player. Wow. Defense player of the year in the whole yeah. state of Texas. Yeah. He was going to be the next big, great linebacker yeah. at A&M. And uh, so I go back to a Rockport, my hometown, and ask my coach, let's go, hey, I don't know what to do. He's yeah. like, Dad, go back to school, make football second priority. Yeah. Get that education because wow. athletic ability is going to end one day. Yeah. You never know when it's going <laughs> to yeah. be, but it's going to end. Yeah. But yes, you're 17, 18 year old, you don't yeah. accept that no. stuff. So I think I learned that, and that was really the rock bottom of my career. And I go back and and I re reprived my, my, my priorities. Uh, so I worked out at six in the morning, go to class at eight, come back at 12 and worked out again and come back at four and worked out with the team. And yeah. for the whole year, that's what I did. Cause yeah. I said, I just want an opportunity. Yeah. Just like my family wanted an opportunity when they came to America. Right. I'm, I'm Vietnamese American, getting a scholarship, play division one football, famous wrecking crew. Yeah. Just want a chance. That's phenomenal. And uh, so I go back and I work myself up from, I don't know how deep I was on the depth chart. Yeah. I worked all the way up and I was a backup to the guy that was an All-American. Yeah. Uh, he was going to start for the next three years, the next great one. And uh, leading up to the first game of our 95 season, my redshirt yeah. freshman right. year. See, he's already a sophomore. And then um, and what was crazy was that um, during practice that Wednesday, we played that Saturday, the Wednesday practice, Coach Slocum, R.C. Slocum said, hey, get on the line, run sprints. So we ran sprints. And he steps in a sprinkler hand. Oh. Twists his ankle. They can't play. Wow. So I had the opportunity to play. And that was you my stepped in. That was my career. That's wow. how my career started. So your Texas career Indian. started with a sprinkler head. The sprinkler yeah. head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So out of all that, and, and answering your question, the best thing that I've learned is that you no, know, embrace the moment, embrace the time. I think things go by so fast. And then when I got the opportunity, I was gonna re relinquish that opportunity yeah, no. to be a starter. No. And that my well, that was my mindset the whole time was like, hey, I can control what I can control, and I just wanna be the starter. I wanna help this team win. But I think at the big picture, sitting back now, I wish I could enjoy just yeah. a little bit more and be more, um, not as focused, yeah. laser focused, but I have yeah. to be laser yeah. focused because I wanted that opportunity. What I hear you saying is just backing up and going, hey, just enjoy the ride enjoy a little bit. Enjoy the ride. I mean, and work then, hard, but enjoy the ride. Yeah, and I didn't enable because I was just always competing, competing, competing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I was wired differently, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and, and I think that's... Uh, so one of my core values at work is says be where your feet that's are. That's good. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Just that's enjoy good. your feet, yeah. enjoy. But that, that's what I would share. 
because I got to the Cowboys with the same way. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I worked, worked and I said, hey, they bring in linebackers in yeah. every yeah. every week. Yeah. If you have a bad game, <laughs> you know, Sunday and Monday uh, yeah. at the practice field, yeah. they had guys working out. Like, dude, they're trying to get my job. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know. And the same thing would apply to enjoying your kids enjoying your career yes, sir. and anything else you're doing. So, mm-hmm. well, uh, the other thing we didn't mention, uh, voted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2017. That's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, you know, that, I was at that meeting in the National Football Foundation. It was the group last, you know, two nights ago, I had the dinner with Archie Manning is the, is the oh, head wow. guy there. Yeah. But uh, but it was great. It's, um, you know, an honor and all that is so accolades and yeah. awards. And for me, you know, I, I never, ever want that. Yeah. You know, because it's not me. It's 11 other guys. Really, it's 22. Really, it's yeah. whatever the team is. Right. And um, and for me to be honored or recognized, yeah. I always tell my teammates or my coaches, I say, hey, I don't really want it, but I understand how it works. Sure. The process works. When your teams are doing good, you win. They have to recognize somebody. And and without those offense, the defense alignment that yeah. I play with, I wouldn't make all those tackles or make all those plays. And all those guys on scout team that teaches during the week, you know, throughout my career, uh, that never ever played it down in college football, yeah. but they're the one that showed us, hey, the yeah. formation, the adjustment, the practice, yeah. it made me better. Yeah. But you know, I owe it to not just our team, but just the whole organization of Texas A and M University. This sitting on the sheet, but uh, but that's more of a Vietnamese um, the culture value. In value. It. I mean, in terms of American culture being more individualistic, it's all about me, which is not. It's a Christian value, yeah, yeah. but uh, on the other hand, that it is more about community. And, it's community and, and it's that. family, and I think it's very similar to Vietnamese and Hispanics are very similar. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it's like mukasa mikasa. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 mikasa yeah. mukasa. So, yeah. so, but for us, it's you work better, and I think that's how I really, really helped me too through my career is that yeah. you do what you're supposed to do, right. but then you do as a team. So yeah. you do something that you're supposed to do. You go to a potluck, like you bring a little thing, it's a yeah, family yeah, gathering. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But that's how we do it at in the Vietnamese culture. We Everything is um, family style, yeah, yeah, and and I think it's a combination at, of that and just the work ethic and dad and mom, yeah. you know, I mean, um, sent down to me and and watching them because when we came over, mom worked two job, dad worked yeah. three job, had a shrimp boat, you know, we were doing yeah, everything we can just yeah. to put food on the table. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, we grew up in. I was born in refugee camp, and then we live in government housing when I first right, got to Rockford. Right. And, and then for me to never forget that and understand that, right? Uh, how do we give back? And then you know, God could have chosen give people opportunity. And yeah. God could have chose any, yeah. anybody. Yeah. But He gave me a chance, and now I got a chance to really help and impact and and try to gather other people to help me to impact other people yeah. with all purpose. Well, I know you know. Speaking of all that, I know you're a man of faith. Mm-hmm. You've already uh, uh-huh. talked about that a little bit. Tell me, share with us a little bit of your spiritual journey. You know, it's crazy. I grew up in there. Obviously, mom, we were Catholic, leaving right. Vietnam, coming to America. And, um, you know, we had to go to church. Obviously, yeah. we did the rosary every day. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah, go to church yeah, every, yeah. you know, we, we go to mass during the week. And if we are able, uh, when we're younger, we were obviously all the time. And then we got older at Sundays or, or Saturdays if you're able to go. But we, we, for me, it was just a routine, routine, routine. And it was ritual. It was great. Right. Don't get me wrong. It was great. Uh, but um, I always go back to that question: Why did He chose me? Right? Why right. did God chose me? And what was my purpose? Right. And um, you know, you, know, you go back and you talk about Jesus talking about Simon, Andrew, Peter. Hey, come with me. Follow yeah. me. I would make yeah. you fishy of men. And, and and I always ask myself that question for the longest time. And and when I got to Texas A and M after games on Saturday, Sunday, I used to go to mass. I yeah. Church. I was. Right. You know, I understood it wasn't me. Right. And I can tell you during the time with the Cowboys too. During between possessions, yeah, on the defense, I was doing rosary, like, yeah, <laughs> I, but because it's yeah. because I knew, you know, keep me safe, and right. you know, because right. you're one hit away, yeah, from being, you know, yeah. being injured oh, for the rest yeah. of your life, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it's a it's a violent, violent game, but um, but I was a fresh, I was a a senior. I just I just got drafted by the Cowboys, and wow. uh, the chaplain from my high school. Just moved to Dallas to do seminary wow. school in Dallas. Wow, Dallas seminary. DTS, yeah. Yeah, so he um, he was in Dallas, and I say, hey, so they put us up in a in an extended stay. Yeah. So we're training and we're staying there, and I say, hey, Mr. Bailey, so Bill Bailey is his name. I say, Coach Bailey, I, I need you to um, borrow your truck. I need to get a U-Haul to go yeah. get my 
the three items I had in college, a bed, a TV, yeah. and a couch. Yeah. That's all I had. And I said, hey, I need a boy a truck. So he, he, he let me go with his truck, him and I. So three hours down and three hours back, yeah. he, uh, he just, we just talked about Jesus. Wow. We talked about God and, and um, you know, just, just a lot. It was so much stuff. And that's when I knew it was July the 2nd, right before we went to training camp, July 2nd of 99. Wow. And, 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 I, and he helped me. Uh, accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Yeah, and, and for me, uh, from then on, I, I thought I arrived. I thought, hey, this is, you know what I mean? It's, it's fresh, it's new, it's great. You accepted Jesus yeah. and you dig in the Bible. You're so much doing all this stuff because uh, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And then at my year, my career went on. And so I think it was 2005, 2006 when my, my career ended. Uh, I was like, man, it's like, it was so great, but I think I'm missing something. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I go back and I said, um, 2010, I was coaching at A&M. And right when we were let go with Mike Sherman's staff, I was like, oh, I want to coach football. But yeah. I don't know, I want to put my wife and family in that situation. Right. I'm trying to move every few right. years. Uh, we want to find something more stable. And then I said, like, what am I missing here? And then I always think back of the 1999 Senior Bowl. Yeah. And uh, what was crazy was that Tony Dungy was my coach wow. for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Wow, Tommy, yeah. Lovey Smith, and I got another story for Lovey. All those are believers, yeah. Yeah, all the believers, and, and they gave us a Bible. And yeah. I still have that Bible. So wow. when I left A&M in 2011, 2010, uh, that season, we, we came up with a plan of, hey, Fellowship of Christian Athlete. Yeah. Every student athlete that walks into campus yeah. at A&M, 140, 144 of them wow. every year, 150 of them every year, in, Bible. in the locker oh, that's Bible. Right. So we've been doing it for 10 years. We just started Texas Wesleyan this past oh, this yeah. past year. We're doing it with Middle, Mid, Midwestern University. Sam Houston's part of the A&M. Okay. So, um, so we're doing that. And then all of a sudden now the purpose is really in the Fort Worth. I'll challenge them today is that we want to put Bibles in every kid's hand oh. at the school. Oh, yeah. So we finally get to go into public school in Fort yeah. Worth. Yeah. We finally got somebody that's an area director in Chauncey Franks, yeah. who is at TCU. Yeah, I hope he's going to be here today. Yeah, I hope he's here, but um, he is now the lead. And we have uh, Michael Michael Hatcher. Uh, Michael Hatcher. Yeah. He's the one that's going in. Yeah. So he called me the other day. He's, um, he, he, he wants Bibles. Michael's and, a good and, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I've that's what Michael. we're doing. And, and my goal is now to, hey, let's build this. And yeah. that's what we want to do is build, build this to have every kid just needs you know, in, in a society, in a world, what's going on with What's going on with this world is yeah. that, hey, our kids, there's so many stuff that goes on. And, and if you can get to them soon with the Bible right. and share the Bible and do huddles and, yeah. and do testimonies. And, right. and I think those are the big things because we have a lot of testimony through those 10 years or so that we have done at uh, right. A&M. Right. You know I mean, so many kids, so many good, great testimony about kids that, that has, it, they, didn't, they didn't have the Bible. They didn't know where to go. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so that's what it is, is the purpose of. Oh, that's great. Put it all together. Great. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, David Rasco, a good friend of mine, I joke with him. He had to eat a lot of chicken sandwiches to get to, to get talk me. to you. So, uh, <laughs> but you own the Chick Fil A here in Fort Worth, yeah. uh, operator, owner, operator, and uh, I know you use that uh, to disciple kids, to pour into kids. Tell us a little bit about how you use your business and what you're doing now, also to pour into people. Well, I think that's the. Um, it's a business, and and. Earlier, I said I like to. I wanted to coach football, right? And, and I treat basically our business like a football team. Yeah, you yeah, know I, mean? I yeah. run the operation. If you go in there, they will tell you, "Hey, that, that's five star, one star, three star, yeah. whatever yeah. The, the stars are." <laughs> we know the stars, and, yeah. And then, and, and it all works together. I think um, those are compartments of hey, offense. You know, offense alignment is really our kitchen. Yeah, those are the more, most important guys. Yeah, yeah. You got to protect the quarterback, protect the chicken. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? the chicken. And then, and then. The front line, the front count is really our defense. But we we joke around about all that stuff. But it, but at the day, um, these are inner city kids. Yeah. A lot of these kids don't have much. Okay. And, and the family don't have much. And a lot of them are working for all different reasons. Yeah. It's for them or it's for their family. Is that um, in by intention from you or is that just who's coming and applying coming for the job? That's coming and applying okay. for the job. Okay. That's what I have to, yeah. to deal with. But, hey, that's why I'm there. For yeah. That's why he put yeah. me there. And what we do is that we try to develop them. We try yeah. to give them opportunities, just like myself. I can share with them that we didn't have much either, you know, right. what I mean? when we were growing up. So as long as you work hard, keep your nose clean, give yourself yeah. a chance. And and how do I do it as an operator? What are my 
why would they want to come to work for me right. instead of somebody else? Yeah. And, and I think that's the whole purpose is that, hey, you come here and, and we're a team, we work as a team, we're family yeah. outside of your family. Yeah. And how do you grow? And I can tell you stories and stories and stories about how kids has come and gone from our store. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's just part of it. I'm not yeah. saying to to boast or no. to pat myself on the back, but I think I am the bridge for a lot of those inner oh, city God, kids God uses that. to yeah. have a chance to, hey, pursue their dreams, the aberration, because a lot of these kids don't have any confidence because yeah. they don't get out of home yeah. and, and they don't know any better. Right. And uh, whatever they're influenced by, uh, it's easy, obviously, by the surroundings. Yeah. And I think where we at is a, is a place where we can nurture, we can develop and we can grow and they can grow with us and right. we can help them to have a chance of life to and to see life. what running a business is like and all of that. Speaking of, of leadership, servant leadership, uh, I've heard rumors that man, you get behind there and sling some chicken too. Is that right? <laughs> I've heard we you, have to, we have to. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, and, uh, I've heard got, you kind of plug in wherever you need yeah, to plug in. I just do that because uh, that's that's just part of my nature. Yeah, and I, and I think the most important about that is that those people, you don't separate yourself from. Hey, he's the owner. He's the man. He's the right. operator. He did, you don't want him to work. I said, no, 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 no. I was like, I'll yep. fit in where I need. Right. If we need me, I'll go in and guess what? Yeah. This is a perfect time for me to ask the next person, yeah. what's going on? How yeah. you doing? Yeah. I get to know them right. even deeper. Right. But they don't know that I'm doing yeah. that. I, yeah. I, I do it intentionally, but they don't know that I'm doing it because I come back and I go tell my other leaders yeah. who my leaders are. I just tell them, go, hey, this is going on with this person. Yeah. They're not telling anybody but me because I have to because right. I'm asking questions. Yeah. I'm, but but that's why I do it because yeah. I, do, I do it to help the team and let them know that, hey, I'm not better than anybody else. Right, right. I'm just part of the team. Yeah. I'm a player. I'm that's a player. And, yeah. and, and you need me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're there. And I'm there. And so, that's great. Uh, but that's how I, I'm more by example. You know, we talk yeah. about leader, leadership exchange and, and leaders and what we do. There's so many different kinds of leaders. Yeah. You know what I mean? For my leaders, the way I've been raised and loved, we have vocal leaders. We have leaders that set example. We have leaders, certain, certain leaders yeah. that do certain things, right? So for me, I'm, I'm more of an example guy. Yeah. You know, I, I show them the way I action, the way the way I carry myself. I hope that they can see that. Hey, this I'm Christ pretty sure me. that's the way it should be across the board, no yeah. matter what kind of leader you are. Right? So, <laughs> well, Dad, man, it's been great to be with you. Well, we are you. Uh, we're, we're going to have to get up to the to luncheon this morning. I know okay. they're going to love having you. So, again, so so thank honored you, to be with you. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Right.